Hi weaving friends, I hope you are having a tremendously wonderful day. I'm sharing this tutorial with you today on how to do a knotted fringe. This is an excerpt from my Wove to Go Beginners Rigid Heddle Loom course and I'm going to link to that course down below in case you want to check it out. It's fantastic for beginners or for sort of nervous weavers who want to get to know their looms a bit more with a simple project and learn lots of really helpful techniques. So I hope you can check that out. Also don't forget to subscribe, like this video, share any of my videos that you find helpful because I'm sure others will find them helpful as well. And don't forget that if you click next to the subscribe button, the little bell, you will get a notification every time I have a new video so you will never miss one. Well, I hope you enjoy and get a lot out of this tutorial. And as always, thanks for watching. So it's easiest to do this on a flat surface. A table is perfect where you can have the piece facing you so all the fringes are facing you. And you want to grab a heavy book or some other sort of weight, but a heavy book works really well and most of us have some sort of a heavy book in our house. And just place that on the weaving so that when you're going to be manipulating the fringes, the actual mat's not going to be sliding towards you or sliding away or otherwise moving. So we're going to take the first bunch, it doesn't matter where you start, but start on one side so that you can sort of do it evenly. If you start in the middle, then you might end up with some uneven threads. And you can decide how many warp threads you would like to have in each bunch. And I think for me, I'm gonna go with a group of four. So I'm gonna count off the first four warp threads. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, Four. and you can see that they're all sort of in order. I'm not jumping across and grabbing a warp thread from another part that's gonna then cross over other warp threads. They do sit in order and it's easiest to grab them like that. And you want to make a single knot, but you want the knot to come up as close to the last row of weaving that you did so that everything is neat and held in a proper place. And you, as you work your way along, you wanna try and have your knots approximately in the same place. It is difficult to get them all in exactly the same spot, but that's what we're aiming for. So I would be putting my finger on here and just making a loop. Okay, so my finger's holding the loop. Then I wanna pass all of those warp threads through the loop and when I go to tighten that knot as I said we don't want the knot down here somewhere we want it right up near the weft thread one handy tip for getting it near is to grab a tapestry needle pop it through the loop and have that helping you to manipulate the knot upwards and then once we're right up near the weaving, the last row of weaving, we can then tighten the knot. And then we can count off the next four. So I've got one, two, three, four, keeping them all in order. And then just making my next knot up near the top. So I'm bending it up over my thumb. I'm using, I usually use two fingers to space the knot because then I can use those two fingers to help pass the warp threads through, the tail through. So they sort of hold on to or pinch the tail threads and hold everything in place and then it's not as fiddly. So when I bring those threads through, remember I'm not tightening right away. I'm having a look, making sure that my other threads that haven't been knotted yet are just out of the way and then I can bring in my tapestry needle if I need to just tighten things up a little bit and then cinch that knot right up near the weaving. So now I've got two knots and they're laying approximately side by side or as near as I can get them. So I'm gonna count off the next four. And once again, Use my thumb up right up near the top of the weaving. Pop my fingers in there. Turn the loop. Put the tail threads through. 
pull them through. I'm going to pop my tapestry needle into the loop which helps me to get a nice neat and tight knot right before I actually tighten it up near my weaving. All right, having a closer look at what we've been doing, separating the next one, two, three, four warp threads. Okay, so you can see I've got my three knots along here so far. I'm going to use my thumb, bend up, bring my two fingers in, twist around to make a loop. I'm going to pull my warp threads through with my two fingers carefully bringing in my tapestry needle into the loop to tighten and neaten. So even though I've used my tapestry needle to tighten and neaten that up the actual knot is still loose which is what I want because I want to tighten it myself into position right up near the others like so. Now we can count off our next four. One, two, three, four, all in order. And again, passing up over the thumb, bringing in the two fingers, making a loop and grabbing those tail threads Pulling through just slightly, grab my tapestry needle and tighten that up a little and then tighten it into place like so. Next four, one, two, three, four. You can see that this weft thread has come loose a bit and we can kind of nudge that back into place a little bit with the needle. If you pull down on the group that you're using and push up, that just helps to replace that weft thread that wants to come out of place. Next four, one, two, three, four. Once again, I'm just going to help place that weft thread back where it belongs. Now, if you think that these knots look a little bit too big or a bit bulky for your liking, you could always do them in groups of two and that would be half the size. Next four. Just pushing up a little, popping it back into place. This all gets a bit faster as you go along. Alright, so I'm going to keep knotting and I'm going to do that right to the other side. We'll speed it up a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing. 